All right, everyone, it's a happy day because Brexit, finally, Boris Johnson has signed the final withdrawal agreement. It's now set in stone. Brexit occurs in one week. That is the last day of January. It was six days from now, actually. Now, um, that's a good thing. And now the IMF is casting a more rosy picture for the British economy than initially was, was speculated for some years. See, the, the whole goal of pr the Project Fear thing, which is sort of the term used for it by, by the Kippers, the Brexiteers, people that wanted to leave, um, is the notion that the globalists wanted to convince the British initially not to vote to leave. When they voted to leave, they've, they tried to convince them to allow it to be slowed down enough so that eventually, you know, four or five years later, they can justify holding another referendum because we need a true people's vote because it's the old people's vote doesn't count anymore. That was the goal. They failed at that. They, they managed to bumble enough that the Tories, that Boris Johnson got a massive uh, majority he didn't need to work with anyone else, could scrap the rules and do whatever he wanted. So Brexit's now assured. It will happen in six days. Congratulations to the British people. Now, initially looking at the election there, I wasn't quite so optimistic. It looked like at the last moment there was going to be some ballot fudging and uh, rigging and other problems, which you see in the Western world to try to keep populism from existing in some cases by corrupt globalistic authorities. Now, but it finally happened. The only the sour thing in it is that it, it comes with a deal. It comes with a caveat that this is not a true Brexit. It's just the first step into Brexit. That being said, now that it's official, is there's nothing to stop that from eventually happening. Over the next year or two, be very, very careful about what you accept is true within the British legacy media. Because what's going to happen, I suspect, is that any bad economic information, if the economy goes well, obviously, then the EU gets egg on its face. That's the best possible outcome. The best outcome is the UK signs trade deals with other more civilized uh, areas uh, that aren't going to mistreat it and abuse it, um, and does well. The, the, the hope should be the British people do well and are, are prosperous and at peace and everything. I don't understand why so many people in the EU don't want that to happen. And it's it's pretty it's pretty low, uh, honestly, some of the rhetoric we get from the people in, in Brussels. That being said, if the UK doesn't do well, every little thing will be blamed on Brexit. If your cigarette doesn't light properly, it's because Brexit affected the quality of matches. Trust me, that's going to be the basic line of the day for years to come. The reason that they're going to do this is that this is the second phase of their attempt to undo Brexit and bring about, you know, true economic globalism there to subjugate you. They're going to try to convince you that Brexit has caused problems. They're going to run politically on this, specifically with leftist parties, because it's clear that the right wing has solidified against the concept of being enslaved there, which is to their benefit and to their credit, I would say. <laughs> Think of what you will about the Tory movement overall. Uh, as the weak, ineffectual edifice that it tends to be, uh, but it decided to grow some balls, and, and that's a good thing. Leftist movements there will then harangue and, and, and rabble-rouse and do what they do best, and then eventually, some years down the road, they're going to call for another referendum to re-enter the EU. That's what they're going to try to do. They'll say, well, uh, we'll, we'll weather it in the meantime. They're going to try to strike trade deals or, or force... Uh, bureaucratic deals or regulations to keep the UK as enslaved as possible even while it's technically no longer in the EU in order to both affect the economy negatively and to help the multinationalists whose, whose funds after all if you're a British person but your 90% of your wealth is tied up in the EU you care more about the EU doing well than Britain doing well that's the whole fucking problem the whole problem is that these kinds of post-national confederacies are formed by people who primarily don't have skin in the game at home. They have skin in the game in the region that they're trying to amalgamate. This is like, let's say, let's say that somebody wanted to be the governor of Vermont, but most of their money was tied up in, in banks in New York and in New York investment and stuff like that. We have a problem, by the way, in my home state of Vermont with people coming from New York to run for office. They, they're born and raised in, in Albany or in New York City with those values. They come to Vermont. They like the scenery, set up shop. They've moved there specifically because they tend to be from the higher echelon, economically speaking. This is the case with Howard Dean, um, Bernie Sanders, although not from a position of wealth, from a position of lifelong political work. Uh, and then they set up shop and become Vermont politicians. We've had governors like this. Shumlin, I think, initially 
uh, was born in Vermont, but then raised elsewhere, if I remember correctly. I think he went to school elsewhere and, and stayed out of the state for a while. I think it's funny because Shumlin, you know, the more genuinely liberal one is the one that I think was from Vermont. Howard Dean was initially not, I believe. If I remember correctly, he came to Vermont specifically to go to college and be a professor for a while. I could be wrong. Uh, I mean, but this has happened multiple times. This happens in the UK, too. A lot of the people that are in your political system primarily are beholden to other countries when it comes to their wealth generation. They're going to act from their self-interest as humans tend to do. That's really what it boils down to. You don't need a shadowy cabal. You don't need a worldwide conspiracy. Multinational corruption is just the result of plutocracy. It's the same inclinations as you had 100 years ago, except that they've been amplified by uh, world trade, travel, and communication. And the ability of people now in what initially was a more laissez-faire economic world, admittedly, uh, their ability to invest elsewhere, to gravitate wealth around, to take advantage of favorable now, more capitalistic conditions in one country over another in order to maintain greater wealth and therefore stability and power. It made sense for them to do that. By the way, I mean, the, the ability to do this itself is a good thing, not a bad thing, but it has led to a worse scenario in which the capitalism aspect has been uh, burned away in favor of a handful of billionaire multinationalists who now run roughshod over the UK's uh, system. It's just sort of the way that it's worked. So be very careful. Uh, congrats on Brexit, but be very careful. Um, look very closely at what you're told, because a lot of it will be bullshit, basically. That's about all. Peace out.